Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to Dr. Hong's classroom. This week I've decided to talk about a touchier topic. Now, for the past few weeks, I've noticed court cases were debating whether uh, recovered COVID patients should be required to get the vaccine. The question is why natural immunity to the disease are not counting in the US. Well, we are no longer looking at who are the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated, but instead looking at the population in terms of immune and not immune. Now, like always, I'm going to present evidence on both sides to be fair. So without further ado, let's get started. So to make this topic more focused, we are strictly talking about the adult population in this video. Now that the adult population is basically either have no immunity against COVID-19 or immune to COVID at varying degrees from either natural recovery, vaccination, or the combined. And let's first look at the arguments for giving the vaccine to recovered people. Right now, the official stance from the CDC is still recommending recovered COVID-19 patients to get vaccinated because of two reasons, and I'm going to read it for you. And number one, research has not yet shown how long you are protected from getting COVID-19 again after you recover from it. And second, vaccination helps protect you even if you've already had COVID-19. The CDC quoted at least one study, which is their own study, supports the second argument, mentioning how the vaccine offers higher protection than the previous infection and reduces the risk of reinfection. Now, briefly, it was a case control study that looked at reinfection data during May to June 2021 in Kentucky. Now, this data is outdated without a question because it was before the Delta wave hit in the summer. Now, however, the conclusion did stated being unvaccinated was associated with 2.34 times the odds of reinfection compared with being fully vaccinated. But the study did have some limitation, stating that vaccinated people are possibly less likely to get tested for COVID-19, and therefore the link between reinfection and lack of vaccination might be overestimated. In other words, the 2.34 times odds of infection might be higher than the study found. Now let's look at the argument against giving the vaccine to recovered people. And here is a preprint article from researchers in Israel. Some of you may have already seen it from other presentation by other doctors on YouTube. So I'll very briefly go over this one and very quickly go over the result. Now this article compared COVID-19 natural immunity to vaccine-induced immunity and factors in reinfection rate and breakthrough infection rate. This is also the largest real-world observational study of this kind. It was a retrospective study comparing three groups of people. Number one, people who were never infected and gained immunity from receiving two doses of the Pfizer mRNA vaccine. And second, people who recovered and never had a vaccine. And third, people who recovered and had one dose of the Pfizer vaccine. Now, the follow-up period was from June 1st to August 14th when the Delta variant wave was dominant in Israel. The study population was relatively young with an average age of about 33 to 36 years old and more than 95% of the study participants or observed patient data were less than 60 years old. They were also relatively healthy. The only risk factor for about 20% of the observed data was obesity defined by a BMI greater than or equal to 30. 
To very quickly summarize the result, the risk of Delta breakthrough infection was between 5.96 fold to 13 fold higher than reinfection rate in recovered patients. That was a huge news about a month ago, but one of the more significant limitations is that the observed population was relatively young and healthy, and this result cannot be generalized to people with many risk factors and older people. But at least the study showed the benefit of vaccination in recovered patients might not be as much as some authority had expected. Alright, the authorities are not going to give up very easily, so let's go for an argument for giving the vaccine to recovered people again. Here is one of the more recent CDC studies stated that not all persons recovering from COVID infection develop SARS-CoV-2 virus specific antibodies. And this low antibody count is particularly more often found in younger patients with lower viral loads during their infected time. But there are several limitations we need to pay attention. First, the study did not look at a robust population. They only collected serum samples from 72 patients, and they find 26 of the 72 samples did not contain detectable SARS-CoV-2 virus specific antibodies. And antibodies were the only marker they had measured in the study. But at the same time, the CDC is not recommending assessing COVID-19 immunity only based on antibody testing. So the argument for vaccinating recovered patients based on antibody level is not very strong. So if the benefits of giving vaccines to people who had already gained some immunity is not that high, and like Mr. Spock would say, Logical then logically we would need to look at harms in vaccinating recovered people. So let's loop back to look at arguments against giving the vaccine to recovered people. This is a study published back in March, which was a survey study asking people to self-report the side effects after vaccination. And of the 2002 respondents, 26.6% had a prior COVID-19 infection, and a prior COVID-19 infection was associated with increased risk of any type of a side effect such as fever, breathlessness, flu-like illness, fatigue, and local reactions. And a different study that in the UK was published in the Lancet Infectious Disease Journal it stated that systemic side effects were 1.6 times more common after the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine and 2.9 times more common after the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine among individuals with previous SARS-CoV-2 infection than among those without known past infection. And similarly, local effects were also higher in previously infected people after the vaccine. A few weeks ago, I made a video talking about superhuman COVID immunity, and I received some criticisms, and I have to acknowledge that my message was a bit unclear. The fact that a super high level of antibodies after vaccinating recovered COVID patient may not be needed or wanted because it may lead to formation of immune complexes that may be the cause for increased systemic side effects. And lastly, a study also showed the two-dose regimen might be counterproductive. The study found that the first dose increased T-cells and antibodies in people with past infection, but the second dose did not do much. It seemed to indicate an exhaustion of the immune system. The conclusion is that it would appear that the promoted risk and benefits are based more on the overall public health than on an individual health decisions. And when policy makers are more leaning toward public health decisions, immunity gained from infections appear to be under-recognized at this point. Now, unfortunately, there's very little thing we small people could do. 
So everything about COVID research is so rapidly changing these days, and my goal is to provide all-rounded evidence and research data to all of you in an unbiased manner. Now, if you enjoy my content, please consider giving me a like, share, and comment, and also subscribing to the channel. This channel needs your help to reach more people. And a little heads up for next week, the FDA expert panel is going to hold a meeting on both October 14th and October 15th to discuss the Moderna booster dose and as well as the Johnson & Johnson booster dose and potentially mixing different COVID vaccine from different manufacturers. And I will keep a close eye on the meetings and provide you with a cliff note in my next video. So until next time, please stay safe and healthy. And thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.